Welcome back to another episode of Jason's Game Room, the only podcast here on YouTube that talks about everything gaming, from video games to board games to dice games to CCGs. Hell, I even talked about Pog once and everything in between. If it has anything to do with gaming, it's going to be on this show, and you're going to want to keep tuning in to find out what I'm talking about next. And for today's episode, I want to talk about the LEGO series of video games, and I'm surprised I haven't talked about this sooner, because Lord knows I've played a lot of the LEGO video games, and I own several of them. And where to begin? There, There's just so much awesomeness and fun in these games, and good, clean fun. You can let your kids play it endlessly without having to worry about anything. You can play it with your kids if you have kids. Hell, I play it by myself and I'm an adult. And I've had a couple friends come over for a Lego game night. Because it's just that much fun. And for me it all started with uh, the Lego Star Wars series. And the full saga, which is episodes 1 through 6... I'm not going to talk about the new one because I haven't played it and everybody knows my feelings on the newer Star Wars movies with the exception of Rogue One, which was good. Getting off topic, the Lego Star Wars Complete Saga is just fun from beginning to end. Now, I will say there are a couple levels that really drive me mental even to this day, even though I've beaten the game. And for kids to try to attempt a couple of those levels, they could probably get it better than me, but I'm sure it's frustrating but overall, if you're a fan of Star Wars or if you're a fan of LEGO, that game alone has everything for you that you can want. You can build, go through the levels, experience all the Jedi and Sith goodness and play as all your favorite characters and fly ships. And Of course, the main objective when I play is to gather up studs, which is those little tiny round buttons of LEGO that add to your total. And you can buy things and hidden perks and extras and characters and that's what I really liked about the game too. Um, as far as the Star Wars theme of it goes, it's just fun. Like they, it, It's probably one of the few Star Wars themed games that was done right. There's really nothing bad about it. It's just overall a great time. And the one thing I'll say about it as well is that you can go back and play it on free mode and explore at your own pace and if you have some of the cheat codes and pardon me for saying this but I did have to download some of the cheat codes but only after I beat the game the first time without them is I went back and used the invincibility and the brick locator to find some of the things that I had trouble getting the first time around even though there are guides on the internet I decided just to go back and do free play with the cheat code anyways <clears throat> one of my other favorite Lego games which, for some reason, I don't seem to have anymore. I don't know where it went. I don't remember selling it or getting rid of it. But Lego Marvel Super Heroes. And everyone that knows me knows I'm a DC Comics guy first and foremost. But Marvel Lego Super Heroes is an amazing game. A lot of challenging and, and, and fun levels. And just being able to wander around New York City. There's so much to do in New York City alone. To get extra studs and mini kits and pieces and all sorts of funky gold bricks and things like that. If you are a Lego fan or a Marvel Comics fan, it is a must-play game. There's just so much to do in there. And you have the disposal of all the Marvel superheroes and their respective abilities in there. So I like to play as Spider-Man because I can web-sling around town without having to touch the ground most of the time. Or I can play as Iron Man and just jet around if I wanted to. But another overall great game in the Lego series. And... For, also, I would like to put it on par with Lego Batman 2. Now, the first one, believe it or not, the first Lego Batman, I wasn't overly thrilled about. It was fun, but it, it, it didn't seem as good as a Lego game could be. Whereas Lego Batman 2, also introducing other DC characters in great fashion, and I have it. I actually have the downloadable version that I bought off the PlayStation Store at the time. Lego Batman 2 is fun. Fun, fun, fun. And just being able to play as either Superman or Green Lantern or some of my other very favorite DC comic book superheroes is amazing. And like in the Lego Marvel superheroes, with Lego Batman 2, you can wander around Gotham and unlock stuff and find things and just randomly explore if you want or do what I do. 
play as either Superman or Green Lantern and just fly around the rooftops. It's awesome. Like, why would you, why would you not want to do that? Another very well-made game. I haven't played Lego Batman 3. I would like to, but <clears throat> what happened was, for the longest time, I've been trying to get my own copy of Lego Jurassic World. Now, I used to play it at my best friend's place here and there. We didn't play a whole lot of it, but I played enough of it to whet my appetite, and it was hard to find a copy of it in a, one of the local used video game stores for a decent price. Being already hard to find, especially with everything that's gone on this year and kids want to play video games, when I did find a copy in a store it was almost 50 bucks used and everyone knows I'm poor and I can't afford to spend that. But just a few days ago I found that on the PlayStation Store I was just screwing around on there to see if there was any like five dollar game deals that I can't afford. Lo and behold, Lego Jurassic World used to be around $39.99 on the uh, PlayStation Store. It's now under $20, so I thought, you know what? For under $20, I've wanted this game for a couple years now. I'm never going to find it cheaper than that, and who knows how long for PS3 it's going to stay up there. So I bought it, and just last night I finished the first part of the story of Jurassic Park, and I'm now moving into The Lost World, which I'm probably going to start tonight. Um, it's even more fun than some of the other Lego games and whereas in Lego Star Wars where sometimes the camera angles were just that was the, probably the only thing that really really bothered me about Lego Star Wars is the camera angles were just horrible sometimes when you needed to do things they seem to fix that for Jurassic World the camera angles are perfect in that game and you can tilt and move around the camera if you need to find something like a secret area or something that's hidden or a mini kit. So I'm glad they went and did that. <clears throat> and I will probably have a better review for everybody when I'm completing the game. But again, I'm going to play through it and beat the game. And then I'm going to go back, find some cheat codes and do free play so that I can get all the mini kits. One of the things I will tell you if you want to play Jurassic World, if you haven't played it yet, the mini kits are a hell of a lot harder to find than in the other games. Whereas in Star Wars, there are some puzzles you have to do and some funky places you have to go. Uh, for a stark example, the first time I played Lego Star Wars, there's 10 mini kits spread out through each level. I was at least finding four or five or six the first time around before I had to go back in. And some levels even eight. In Jurassic World, thus far, I found one at the most. Maybe two, but pretty sure one. Like, I don't know where they hide them all, but wow. And I don't want to use a strategy video from YouTube just yet. I want to go through first myself and uh, see what I can learn before I go back in a second time. But yeah, <clears throat> mini kits. Hard to find in Jurassic World, but an amazing game. And if you've ever been a fan of the Jurassic Park series of movies and the Jurassic World movie, it's it's just awesome just to see the dinosaurs in there and... There are awesome little tidbits, and I think this is really great. There are awesome tidbits for kids to help them learn about the different types of dinosaurs. And they use a lot of big words in the game, which I think is impressive, because that's what kids need these days. They need to learn these big words and expand their horizons. So good on the creators of that game for doing that. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, I'm pondering getting LEGO Star Wars The Clone Wars. I haven't tried that. I'm going to see if there's a demo. And what was that other game I played? There was another one. Another Lego game that was kind of fun. And I think I just played the demo up until... Oh! The actual Lego movie video game. I did play the demo for that. Um, very fun game as well. And I did see the original movie. It was great. And I might have to actually get the full version of that game and play it through and see what happens. Because I kind of missed that demo and I don't know why I got rid of it. Sometimes I forget that I do these crazy things and I get rid of stuff that I'm not done having fun with yet. But all in all, the Lego series of video games is just amazing. Now, the highs, the lows, and the downright dirty. You know I got to do this because I've been lax in recent shows. The highs for any Lego video game are evident. The amount of fun, the creativity involved in the game, it keeps you busy. There is just so much to do and play and... You're going to laugh your head off at some point playing these games because that's how fun they are. 
The lows, like I said, it goes back to Lego Star Wars with the camera angles. That is the only thing that really drives me absolutely crazy in that game, especially when you're doing a mission that uh, centers on flying ships around. The ships just don't steer properly when you try to turn them, and the camera angle just makes you flip the ship over about 20 times before it actually turns. That's the only lows I can think of. Maybe the mini kits being a little bit too hidden, some of them, but it is what it is. It's meant to be challenging even for kids. There is no downright dirty for any of the LEGO video games. I'm sorry. It's just they're too awesome. <clears throat> if I had to rate them all from 1 to 10, 9 out of 10 for all the ones I've played at least, and probably 9 out of 10 for the ones I haven't played. Um, please note I have not tried... Lego Harry Potter or Lego Lord of the Rings, I am not interested in those as a franchise. So it's not because it's a Lego game, it's just I don't have any interest. I might try the Lego Indiana Jones because that actually looks really cool and I've never even tried the demo for that. But anyways, that's all for today. I can ramble on about Lego video games a lot longer, but places to go, people to see, things to do, and I'm going to be playing Lego Jurassic World again tonight to see how far I can get. So everybody have a great day, and as always, game on!